In the previous tutorial, we added a UI input field to our Unity project and enabled the Geocoding and Elevation API. In this tutorial, we will use Unity c -sharp code to get the location in latitude and longitude from the user input address using Google Geocoding API. Let's create a C-sharp script file under project right click on the asset folder and select create and folder let's rename the folder to scripts open the script folder right click create then c sharp scripts rename the file to map in the hierarchy create an empty game object to hold the script files. Right click, then create empty. Let's call it scripts. Select the script game object. Attach the map script file to it by dragging the script file into the inspector area of the game object. Double click on the script file to open it in your code editor. Let's add namespaces that we're going to use later in the code. Let's declare a public variable for the input field. So later, we can get the address text, the user type. Let's create a private string variable that holds the API key, which we generated in a previous tutorial. You can get your API key from Google Maps platform by going to Keys and Credentials and clicking Show Key and then copying the key. Because I don't want to show my API keys, I'm just going to put hashes. But remember, for the code to work, you need to copy your real API key and paste it here. Let's create another private string variable to hold the URL we are going to send in our map request. Let's also create two double variables to hold the latitude and longitude values. I will also create a string variable to hold the text for the latitude and longitude values combined. You will see later how we are going to use them. Let's create one more string variable to hold the text for the address. I will add a default string value for the address. Notice how the address value contains the plus sign instead of spaces. This address will be part of our URL request. And because we cannot add spaces in the URL, the Google documentations requires replacing the spaces inside the addresses with the plus sign. Now, we can set a default value to the input field in the start method. We use the text property of the input field to set its text value. Okay, let's create a method that converts the address into latitude and longitude coordinates from a string address using Google Maps Geocoding API. The type of this method will be coroutine. A coroutine is a special type of method that can pause execution and return control to Unity, but then continue where it left off in the following frame. It allows you to spread tasks across several frames and is useful for long asynchronous operation 
such as waiting for HTTP transfer, asset loads, or file to complete. This way, the frame of the program continue to pass without having to pause for a particular method to finish execution. The type of coroutine should be I enumerator. The URL variable for the location has a specific structure specified by Google's documentation. The first part is specified by the geocode API, and the second part contains the address, which we will capture using another method. The last part is the Google Maps Platform API key. Every time we call this method, it gets the current address and make it part of the URL. Now, we need to pass this URL to the web using Unity Web Request, which provide methods to communicate with the web services. Here, we pass our URL. A yield statement is a special kind of return that ensures that the coroutine function will continue from the line after the yield statement the next time it is called, meaning in the next frame. The send web request function will begin the communication with the remote server. Now, we can check if the web request is successful. If it is not, we can log the error message. Searching the URL on the web will produce the data we are after, including the location. Note that the result is JSON text. The part we are after is the latitude and longitude here. Because this is a text, we will need to read it in Unity and extract the information we are after. There are two ways to do that. One way is through Unity JSON serialization, where you create a class with a data structure matching the JSON data, and use the Unity JSON utilities to read the data in Unity. The other way, which we will use in this case, is through string manipulations. Okay, let's start with getting the text representing the JSON data resulting from the URL and storing it in a string. Because we are only interested in these latitude and longitude details and not the other ones, we can keep this part of the text and get rid of the rest. Then we check the index of the characters before and after each desired part of the text so that we can extract it. For the latitude, we need to get the indices of these characters. For the longitude value, we will get the indices of these characters. All right, let's do what I just explained in the code. I will get the index of the lat text portion. The backslash is so that the quotation marks in the string doesn't cause issues. We can see these quotation marks in the JSON text here. We can also get the index of the location word here. Then, we get the start index of the lat value. We are searching for the calling character, and we are starting the search from the start index of the lat text. Then, we add one to get the location of the first character in the lat value. If we go back to the web result, this is the index of the lat text. This is the index of the colon if we are searching for the lat part. Adding one will land us at the first character representing the latitude value. We can also get the last index of the latitude value. It is where we hit the comma and we can start the search from the start index of the latitude we got in the previous step. Back to the page, we are starting the search from the start index of the latitude value here till we hit the comma. Now, we get the text representing the latitude 
by cutting the part starting at the start index and the length of the part we are cutting is calculated by subtracting the start index from the end index of the latitude value. In the web page, this is the part we are getting as a string. Now, we can convert the latitude string into a number or a variable of type double. We are using the try parse, so the string will only convert to a double if it contains a valid value. Otherwise, no conversion will be done. Let's get the longitude value using a similar methodology. We start with getting the index of the LNG portion of the web response text. Then we get the start index of the longitude value and the end index of the longitude value. Then we extract the portion of the text representing the value of the longitude. Looking at the web request, here is the start index, and this is the portion representing the length of the value we are after. We extract the length by subtracting the start index of the longitude from the end index. Then we convert the text into a number or a variable of type double. We will also combine the latitude and longitude into one text separated by a comma which we will use in another method later. I think I made a mistake in defining the variable name here. Just need to be, the L is capital, and now the error is gone. Let's enclose the whole block of code with conditions to ensure it doesn't execute before ensuring that the JSON text contains the required latitude and longitude data. Let's add comment that describe the method. Okay, let's create a method that gets called every time a user changes the address in the input field that we created in the Unity editor. We assign the text of the input field to the address variable. Then we replace every space in the input address with a plus sign so the address can be used in the URL. Now, we are ready to start the coroutine function using the start coroutine. We can also call the coroutine function in the start method so that the address we define gets set at the start of the game or the app. In this tutorial, we learn how to get the text of the address from the user input and convert it into latitude and longitude values. In the next tutorial, we will learn how to get the elevation or height of the place using the latitude and longitude values we got here. By having the latitude, longitude, and elevation, we will be ready to pass them into the Cesium GeoReference object to move the map according to the input text. We will see that in the next tutorial.